What's up, Wednesday, May 29th? Rocking the Sodacon scarf today. Just feeling these more than conversations vibes. Today we're talking about BYD's hybrid that can go from New York to Miami on one tank of gas. Some That's new it. Toyota That's tech. Talk about. I know. And Gen Z just, just cranking out another double on the next report about uh, when it comes to summer jobs. Yo, and, the chef uh, kiss. I the know. Chef's kiss is Gen Z right you haven't now, noticed, yeah. we're excited about Gen Z. We, we really it. are. We yeah. are. I mean, I'm, I'm the parent. It may of two or may Gen not Zers. be our kids. So <laughs> I know I'm the parent of two Gen Zers. So there's a, there's yeah, a little right. self-aggrandizing. <laughs> oh man. Well, uh, look, made made it. I don't. It, you can't even call Wednesday Hump Day on Memorial Day week. I don't know what to call it. No, I, I feel it like we just got started. Man, and Wednesday. Look, so my church also messes us all up. They have five Sundays a year where they do what was called a rhythm of rest. So like and you no did not have on church Sunday. on Memorial Day weekend. Oh my goodness, it's oh. a whole mess. Oh, I was like, I'm a, I'm sideways. It might straight well up be vacation Monday or Friday. That's... I don't know what today is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like no church, no Monday work. Just forget oh, about knowing what your days are. My goodness, <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Hey, um. We were going to talk about, we mentioned it yesterday. We'll probably mention it a few more times this week. We're going to be drip feeding a lot of a SodoCon content out there. If you were one of the people that had the FOMO because you couldn't make it out there for whatever reason, um, well, first of all, the dates for next year are already on the calendar. So May 12th through 16th, 2025, circle it now. Just like if you had, you save your pennies now, like just think, divide it by 365. That's oh for goodness. less than a cup, a cup of coffee a day, right? Well, a lot it's less than less that, than actually. like a cup of coffee in 2001 a day. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. But, but we are going to be drip feeding content from the last DeSotocon onto yep. the internet a lot over the next 60 days. Starting with the main stage sessions are now released on our YouTube channel. So you can go to our YouTube channel by going to Asotube, a s o t u dot b e. We're talking fixed op strategies. We're talking about uh, tech. We're talking about leadership. We have pitch tank finals. If you want to see some product, it's really a mixed bag of main stage sessions. So you can go there. Aso a s o t u dot b e, or just go to YouTube and search Asotu. And it's what it's like the top playlist, right? Right, right now, there. yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Check it out, and you can see. And you can play it at one point five speed, which is my favorite. Yes, right. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, and then, you know, <laughs> sometimes I wish we could speed content. I know. I it. wish I could one point five speed my life. Real life. I know. I know you do. I know you do. But you miss all the good stuff when you do. Speaking that. of one point five. Oh, maybe no. That was a really great segue to this first story. <laughs> All right, so we've all been talking about BYD when it comes to EVs and are they coming, are they not coming, are we tariffing them or not? Well, BYD has just introduced a this really crazy hybrid powertrain capable of exceeding 2,000 kilometers or 1,250 miles on a single charge and a full tank. So it's f fully charged battery, fully uh, filled gasoline tank. So now you could go to basically uh, New York to Miami on one charge or fill. Uh, Munich to Madrid is how they're going to contextualize that for Europe. I, I, I'm just going to throw it out there. I think you were a little too, too subdued in that. Are you kidding me? You could go. You got to be. Are you telling me? 150 miles. It's a long. That's a long drive. So if you can hold it for that long. <laughs> You can actually not have to stop for anything. Basically, the new hybrid powertrain was unveiled during a live streamed event from China. Their dual mode plug in electric hybrids can now travel distances comparable to the things we just said. Basically, it highlights their progress over five generations of hybrids. So, this is their fifth gen hybrid. Um, oh, so our, our producer Nathan's typing in that's LA to New York City with a single refill. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> They so just, basically, BYD sold 3 million cars last year, delivered nearly 1 million so far this year. Get this stat. For every two hybrids that are sold in the country of China, one of them is a BYD hybrid. So I didn't see that coming. So what you're saying is <laughs> it's, they got it on lock. I mean, this is... Wow. This is, I think, everybody's fear. Like, I, and and they've said multiple times we're not coming to the U.S. But I'm telling you, when they come swinging, we're just parking and, a factory right off the border in Mexico. Like, it'll be interesting to see how this election cycle affects 
the the rollout plan. Obviously, there's a lot on pause because there's a big difference in the way you know the Biden administration um, deals with China versus you know the the proposed like Trump administration. We already have a preview of what that looked like, right? Because we see exactly how that went, and you, you kind of have. I, it's probably going to come is, back, but even stronger. Let me just tell you. Let let me just be real with you right now. If I had one of these cars, I would need to get gas oh. every five months for the that's amount of driving I do. That's ridiculous. That's nuts. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm still, my mind is sideways. Like oh this gosh. totally changes the whole game. Like no, like now you're, you know, people how are talking miles? about how to get from like 250 miles per charge to 330. It's like, they just were like, man, we're just going to do 1250 on a hybrid. You guys good with that? What's, what does what does your Sienna get? Oh, the, it gets like 530 miles. Okay. Tank. So you have so, to think like yeah. if there was a smaller car with yep. a similar size gas tank, like it's still, I mean, 1250 is a long, is a long shot, but that's why Toyota's doing some work. Speaking of Toyota doing work, Stop. let's just Segway. continue Time. on the story here. That's it. So they're developing a lot of new powertrain technology. We hear about their solid state battery development. They've unveiled their next generation engines designed for various car types, including hybrids and biofuel vehicles, um, which is really targeting the stricter emissions rules. Um, and also their diversified approach to making more like not just EVs, but saying like, hey, sustainability is, is a different game for them. So Toyota, Subaru, and Mazda have displayed their new 1.5 and 2.0 liter engines. Um, that are more compact, reducing the volume and height compared to current models. They're looking to integrate with electric comp components for decarbonizing internal combustion engines, making the new engines compatible with alternate fuels like e-fuels and biofuels. Here's a quote. With these engines, each one of the three companies will aim to optimize integration with motors, batteries, and electric drive units. This isn't in the show notes, but I saw something about Toyota making an engine that can accept gasoline. It can accept... Um, uh biofuel uh there was another there's another fuel source you could put in it and electric i was like it's really starting to sound like mr fusion from back to the future remember that like you put the yep. banana peels in and things like that so i mean again we, we're never ones to sleep on toyota ever uh look i knew when toyota mazda and subaru a few years back created this partnership They've done other things with it, right? Uh, yep. Like Toyota and Mazda, both using the financial services, right? But there was a particular interest in the way that Toyota does hybrid, Mazda does engine technology, Subaru does economy, right? Like these three are have constantly challenged the game with fuel. Yep. Um, and seeing them come with this type of thing like they haven't been able to say how many miles and things like that but i guarantee that this type of stuff is the byd competitor out there because yep. they already i mean i think mazda right now outranks all competitors for average fuel economy now they don't have trucks um but right. you start to look at like integrating this type of engine technology across a whole brand and you bring in the additional fuels or the hybrid like Sky's the limit, really. Yeah, Sky's the limit. I, I, we're, I think we're just in a great era of getting a lot more out of the engines that we're creating. So like yeah. that reality that you just said, like I have to get gas once every five months. Like that sounds to me like this little thing called a middle ground, oh, right? That might Adam. just have some place in our society at some point. And maybe it's the automotive industry was the first place we find this. Uh, speaking of finding things. Stop. Oh, finding some jobs. Gen Z's finding all the jobs. They're actually reversing for the first time in 14 years the decline in teen employment. Yes. Bringing back a key rite of passage for adolescents. Uh, teen labor force participation. Once nearly two in three of teens between the age of 16 uh, and 19 in the 1980s has recently hit a 14-year high at 38%. Uh, for the last like however many years, like wow, twenty something, it's been in a dramatic decline. So it was one. Um, it was once like sixty six percent, like not right. too long in my lifetime, your lifetime, and now it's back up to a recent high of thirty eight percent, which is still like, like a little half. over one in three. But it was down in the low twenties for a hot minute there. Um, rising wages, inflation driven necessity, and high demand in retail. 
and restaurant jobs are driving this trend. You mean hospitality, Paul? You mean <laughs> hospitality? I like how they just uh, named those And not those just two. that, but in the coming weeks, employers are expected to add another 1.3 million summer jobs for teens, according to the firm Challenger Gray and Christmas, uh, which name. is a great firm name, by the way. <laughs> um, psychologist and author Jean Twen uh, Twenge highlights how teen jobs teach crucial life skills, saying, this is a great quote, I love it. There's something lost when there are more young people who enter the workforce after college with no work experience. When they learn those lessons about how important it is to show up on time and do a good job, and sometimes you have to listen to the boss, sometimes. all of it builds consciousness for later in life. I want to get you to say that word again. Conscious conscientiousness. There you go. Great word. <laughs> it's so word. true. I love the fact that this is coming back to be a, a cornerstone of teen life uh -huh. um i learned so there much so I know much many that people i learned listen, in that oh you like the reality of life sets in really quickly and instead of protecting our teens from that i think the sooner they can be a part of that the the more prepared like you're literally doing them a favor by yep. getting them to work for somebody else to like have to do like something on repeat when they'd rather be doing something else it's just part of real life and um I'll, I'll tell you what i love seeing and i've noticed maybe this is just my mindset but i feel like i'm noticing an uptick in the in like the attentiveness and enthusiasm of teens in the workplace i don't know if it's because yep. like like the, i go probably the retail business i visit more in the summer is the ice cream stand <laughs> and there's this there's this ice cream stand it's called what's well, a like local ice cream company um, in syracuse and it's full of teens and everybody every teen like wants to work there dialed in and there's a there's it. a place called and Sips right around the corner. Same thing. We we go there always during the summer, and the, there's like four or five teens that rotate this place, and they are dialed. Yep. Dialed. Yep. yep. I know we're gonna recruit those right into the auto industry. I just have to say, <laughs> I just have to say this. If you go to the link and look at the trend map, I just gotta throw this out there, Paul. There was basically from like 2000 to 2000 three or four, oh, there, there was this massive decline. Mm -hmm. And then when I was 16 to 19, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Me and all my friends. Me and all my friends <laughs> held the line. And then it dropped right like hard after that. Hold for a while, and then it's been driving back up the last couple of years. Oh, this is Love such great it. opportunity for the retail auto industry. If oh, you look at those entry so level great. positions of porters and lube techs and receptionists and all the things, like now's the time to get them excited about their first job, yes. their first job. It should be in the auto industry and they should be like, why should. would I ever want to go anywhere else and work? Anywhere. We don't understand. Go out there and hire some teens. Go hire some teens today. It's worth it. Fire it up.